Welcome back to Highly Questionable, presented by Zion. Johnny knows at the beach today is Justin Tuck. Good guy on a bad team. He joins us on behalf of Rush for Literacy Fund, which recently granted $250,000 to the Red Zone, a literacy initiative to help low-income families in the Bay Area. Let's talk to Justin. He's a Raider, by the way. Can you put us inside of the raging competitive mind of Justin Tuck when Khalil Mack and C.O. Moore are celebrating? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's funny now. It wasn't funny at the time. They're yeah. dancing in the backfield late in the game, and you, you, you called timeout. You yelled at them. You were pretty angry. Can you put us there? Well, I think it was just a, a, com a complete bubbling up of frustration. Obviously, we're 0-10 at the time. Uh, and, you know, being... The, the veteran I am, I, I realize we don't have anything to, you know, celebrate. So I guess I let my emotions get the best of me in that situation also. So I think it's a teaching moment for both of us. And I'm guessing you had never felt so old in your life, right? Like you were officially the guy looking at young dudes dancing and you the one telling them to stop. Well, the only thing, yeah, the only thing that made me feel a little younger is I looked over at Wood and, you know, he's he's 38 at the time. So, you know, I felt, I, I still felt like I had a, you know, a little, little youngness to me. But, uh, yeah, you're right, man. It is. You know, I can remember being those guys, you know, 23, 24 year olds in the league, and I'm looking at Michael Strahan. So, you know, now I'm kind of like that guy. I'm the old guy. But you told Woodson, right? Because CO said, don't ever scream at me like that again. And you told Woodson, I want to punch this dude in the face. Like, you're saying all of this yeah, calmly I, right I now, did. but. I did. I told Woodson and CO. Uh, and I told CO if we would have lost that game, then, you know, I don't know if we would have been able to continue as teammates. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, man, it was, it was a situation that, you know, hopefully we all learn from it. And I think, you know, going forward, it's probably going to make CEO a better player. <laughs> Who's the guy that you played against one time? Because you're a large dude, you're a strong dude. Give us a name of a guy you played against, and you're like, man, I can't believe how strong this dude is. I, it's only one person that I've ever went against that I was like, man, this guy is unbeatable. Uh, it's a guy named Larry Allen. And I got him when he was quote-unquote old Larry Allen, but this guy was a brick wall. And he, you know, he knew it, and he, he, he let you know it. So it was kind of like, well, I'm trying to switch sides with people all game, trying not to go, go that <laughs> side. Give us the story. How did he let you know it? Because I don't think of Larry Allen as a talker. I think of him as someone who dominates, but how did he let you know it? Well, I, I did my research on Larry, and more importantly than how he let me know it, you know, it, Young Larry Allen would go up to the line of scrimmage and go whoop whoop, and he would literally let the D tackle know that <laughs> Emmitt Smith and Moose Johnson is gonna be running through this hole right here. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so just imagine you, just imagine you as an NFL D lineman, knowing where the play is. You tell them all your buddies, yeah, they're gonna run right here. And Emmitt Smith, obviously, it's a reason why he he has the most rushing yards in the in the history of the NFL because he probably got 10, 15, maybe 20 yards on that play when you know the play was coming right there. How does wait, that make you minute. feel going back to the huddle? Wait a minute. You're telling us that Larry Allen yes. would announce to you with a fake train whistle <laughs> yes. that he was coming straight to where you were going and then... Yes. <laughs> With nothing you can do about it. What you gonna do about it? That guy used to lift like 700 pounds. <laughs> but he would just tell you? Like, what he was, he's just telling you. It would be like me playing football against my son. Like, <laughs> like Jace, I'm gonna run the ball right here. You can be, you can be here when I get here if you wanna be. But, yeah, so that guy, yeah, that's, that's a special, that's a special breed. I mean, I understand you said you try to switch sides when you can, but you can't sometimes. So you know you can't sure. beat them. What do you? I mean, what do you do? Like, I mean, I don't. I know that seems like a silly question, but you, you have to best. at least pretend to try hard. You give, you give your best. You might run around them on a play. You might say, "Well, coach, I thought I thought they were gonna run the ball, you know, away from me, so I tried to use my speed or just make a decision, <laughs> something. Tell them that the grass was slick and I slipped, or you know, and then they gonna come back and say, "Well, you slipped like 18 times in this game, then." Like, you know, how do you, how do you, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> and obviously a lot of other people didn't know either because, you know, Larry Allen won a lot of those battles. How many times did he hit you with the train whistle? How, how, give me the number See, of times I, that he I got him, I got him older in his career. So he, now he was like, he was just, I, I think a few times he actually helped me up because he felt bad. <laughs> you know, Larry be like, yo, yo, get up, young blood. You know, just you know. I, at, at this time, at this point in his career, I think he just, you know, 
Yeah. He didn't even get any glorification because he had did it for so long. It was just like, well, this is what I'm expected to do. I'm going to go do this and, and move on. It stopped being a train whistle. It just started to be like a truck horn. <laughs> yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, yeah. It was still very loud, though. It was still very loud. <laughs> You don't say to him, Justin, like, knock that off, please, Larry, or you don't want to get him angry. Like, I mean, exactly. can you please? Like, ju- if, if, if I got a play where it was like a stalemate or something like that, then I'll be like, that's a win. You know what I'm saying? Or if I only got knocked off like two, two yards, if I made the tackle for five yards, you know, <laughs> that's a win for me in that. <laughs> you know, you look over. You look over the sideline, you see people like, you know, straight hand and the coach, and they're like, like, yeah, good job. And like, man, this guy just got five, seven yards. You're telling me good job. You know? He didn't score. You're still alive. You're living. So, you know, that is tremendous. I appreciate y'all bringing up these old memories too, man. Appreciate it, man. I'm a, I ain't going to sleep well tonight. <laughs> Justin, my father would like to talk to you. Go ahead, Poppy. Justin, what is the most disgusting thing you have seen on the, on the sideline, on the NFL? Disgusting? Yeah, on the sideline. Um, it was actually in college. I had a, a guy, my freshman year, we had an outside linebacker named Rocky Boyman, and uh, we played in Nebraska, and I don't know if he got his hand got stepped on or, you know, I don't know, but it literally... Uh-oh. was just gushing blood, like squirting, like, and, and the oh. doctors was trying to stop it, and it's hitting them in their face and their mouth, and yeah. I'm just like, oh. yeah, that, is, that, that was the most disgusting, and it was literally just like a, a fountain of blood just, just squirting out of this guy's hand, and he was like, tape it up, I'm going back in. That, yeah, was my, that was my welcoming to, you know, college football, because I was like, man, I need to go to the hospital if that's me. I, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah, somebody else's Justin. blood in your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, thank you for being on with us. We enjoyed that, even if uh, if perhaps you didn't, because we uh, yeah, brought up no. some bad memories. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apologies. No worries. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be a hard night. Hard night of sleep ahead of me. Thanks. Thank you. Gracias, Justin. Gracias. <laughs> De nada. Highly questionable. This broadcast from the Clevelander Hotel on beautiful South Beach.